Hey guys, it's David and we are back in module K3, knowing the business. And this is an awesome little historical recap on a short history of studio film production. Now, when movies were first invented, they were usually short films and they didn't require much planning or abundant resources to conceive of or to plan. Often they were nonfiction. So, there wasn't even a script. Sometimes it just involved as little as setting up a camera on the street and just letting it roll. And, you know, when this was a new art form, that would actually play in a movie house because people would be like, wow, look at that cool street vision or whatever. So, though as movie lengths increased and special effects became more popular, more money and more planning was needed to execute them. And what this led to was the development of the film studio, where planning and production could be carefully monitored and regulated. And what careful planning allowed was the efficient use of resources and, in turn, greater profit. Now, two more important management innovations did a lot to change the balance of power between producers and directors. The first was the institution of production schedules, around 1907 to 1909. And the second was the introduction of what they call continuity scripts, which were in regular use by the early 1910s. Production schedules helped to manage the flow of activity so that you could ensure the maximum utilization of studio capacity and human resources. And these production schedules depended in turn, of course, on continuity scripts, which provided detailed outlines of each individual film project. And those continuity scripts are still in use today. Uh, you know, the final shooting script contains, you know, the number of shots, the camera positions, uh, the actors, the description of the action, and then that's matched up to the budget to make sure that uh, the resources are on hand to be able to shoot all of the shots. As longer narrative films became the dominant type of film production, continuity scripts played the crucial role of indicating the resources such as actors, crew, set, and equipment that would be needed for the production, as well as making sure that the plots were well planned in advance. Now this system, which was really firmly entrenched by 1916, came to be known as the multiple director unit system because it was based around director units and not uh, producers or studio executives. Now under this system each company had several filmmaking units which is kind of ironic because that's similar to the system that's in place today um, and so in a way it's come full circle except that these filmmaking units are now outside of the studio because there's less risk that way. If you put it all in-house, then one person can screw up the whole pot. If you have several filmmaking units outside of the house, then by not exerting too much control, you actually, you don't bet everything on one model and your chances of success are better. It's sort of like diversifying your stock portfolio with a variety of stocks instead of putting all your money into one. Anyway, so each of these filmmaking units had a, was headed by a director and included a full production crew. Other resources, such as actors, uh, were drawn from pooled resources within the production company, and these were made available to each unit as needed. Later, modifications to this scheme led to the central producer system. And in, in this system, Producers took responsibility for supervising a number of simultaneous productions and overseeing the directors who worked on them. So they took, they basically added an, another level of management uh, to the system because more oversight was needed because obviously a single director might run wild. And this is again an analogous to um, investment companies where if they give too much responsibility to one trader and that trader makes a big mistake, it can cost them a lot of money. 
Uh, you can think of, there are some famous instances of that. The one that comes to mind is Nick Leeson, I think, who, who lost a couple of billion dollars uh, trading out of Hong Kong several years ago. Uh, 